All right, you guys like 4Runner videos, then let's just keep on pumping out the 4Runner videos. I always get questions and comments about what I think people should invest in first on their 4Runners, like what the most important mods are to get started. So I thought today I'm going to try and uh, count down kind of the main ones that I think are important for these if you do want to spend some money on your stock 4Runner. And obviously when you modify a vehicle, it's kind of all about personalizing it, so these might not be for everybody, but I figure they're fairly broad. And uh, if you're looking for something somewhere to start, then hopefully this helps you out. All right, first up is the Doug Thorley headers. Basically, there are two different types of Toyota 4.7s. The ones that already have crack manifolds and the ones that are about to have crack manifolds. So these headers from Doug Thorley, I don't know if you can see them down in there. These things are, I think, T304 stainless steel. They got a lifetime warranty. Uh, they're emissions compliant, so you can you weld your original catalytic converters on them so you don't have to worry about emissions testing or anything like that. Uh, no check engine lights or any kind of tuning required. Now, Doug Thorley claims these will increase 30 horsepower and 30 foot-pounds of torque, but it's worth noting that's not peak horsepower and torque, so it's not like this thing's going to make 300 horsepower or something. That's in the mid-range, but, I mean, those kind of gains, that's where you want them. That's what makes everyday driving a bit more noticeable with these. Also, MPG-wise, I ended up gaining back pretty much everything that I lost with the lift and tires. So, like, combined with the headers and the Gibson exhaust, I think I'm, I gained two, almost three miles per gallon. Now, I can't say I would buy these just as the upgrade by themselves, because, I mean, it's not a race vehicle, it's just an SUV, but uh, they're hands down the best way to fix cracked exhaust manifolds on these Toyota 4Runners. All right, next up, and I guess number three, is paint correction and ceramic coatings. Now, I know this isn't really a modification, it doesn't really count for that, uh, but it definitely makes a difference if you care about the way that your vehicle looks. Doing a paint correction is uh, definitely going to make it stand out from the crowd. The thing is, like, it doesn't always have to be a big, huge $2,000 job that you see on YouTube being done on exotics and stuff. Like, just a quick and simple one-step polish is going to be enough to really make it stand out and look different than all the other vehicles in the parking lot. It'll bring out that gloss and shine that is really noticeable to people that have that kind of an eye. As for the ceramic coatings, uh, I know that ceramic coating isn't for everybody, um, but for me, on a vehicle like this, it definitely makes it easier to clean up when it does get dirty, and it's kind of funny that I'm talking about detailing stuff right now when we're not exactly looking clean and detailed. But it does make it easier to clean it up after I've been having fun out here, which I just saw a sign today and realized I'm not supposed to be out here. So I did all the paint correction on this one myself. If you've seen all of my detailing videos on this channel, which you probably haven't because Nobody watches those. But I do polish vehicles on the side, that's my thing right now. So I did this myself. This one is ceramic coated with G-Technic Crystal Serum Light and then topped with EXO. And I'm gonna be redoing all that stuff as part of the 4Runner TLC series, which will be coming up very soon. We're getting closer. I just had to get this thing a little bit dirty first before we make it clean, right? It's understandable. Now, I know not every fourth gen 4Runner has a V8 and not everybody cares about detailing and polished paint. So now we're getting into the ones that most 4Runner owners can relate to. So number two is going to be upgrading your suspension. This is a big one, I think. The uh, the fourth gen 4Runner has kind of low ground clearance from the factory for an off-road SUV, especially up front here. So raising the ride height definitely makes a big difference as far as functionality and even the looks. The factory suspension definitely rides nice on the street, but uh, it kind of has trouble controlling things at higher speed off-road, and it's uh, kind of soft and wallowy. Is wallowy a word? And you got a lot of different options for upgrading the suspension on these 4Runners. There's a, a lot of great companies that offer different setups you can get. And honestly, I, I don't think you can really go wrong with most of them. They're all pretty good quality. It just depends on how much money you want to spend. I know the, the Bilstein 5100s are a really popular setup for these for people that don't want to spend thousands of dollars. But I actually ended up going with the Fox 2.0 coilovers, which you can see in here. Yeah, we got some cleaning to do. 
So these things ride great on the road for sure. Uh, definitely as good handling as the x ray system, which is now deleted on this. And not only did I not notice that it was gone, but I think it's actually a little bit better with it gone with these. And the biggest thing though is that it's definitely much more controlled off-road, uh, especially at higher speed stuff. I mean, yeah, it's not bypass kings or anything. This is just an entry level setup from Fox and uh, it really does well for what it is. And despite the fancy Fox logo on there, these things are actually really not that expensive. For more on that kind of stuff, feel free to check out my cost to build video, which will be right there, I guess. Okay, last but not least, count it down. Number one, the absolute best modification you can make to your 4Runner, in my opinion, is tires. If you can't do anything else to your 4Runner, you're gonna leave it completely stock, you just have enough money to do one thing, upgrade your tires. These things are really capable from the factory, the way that they are, with no modifications done, and as soon as you upgrade to a more aggressive off-road tire, it's uh, really gonna transform the way that this thing drives off-road and what it's capable of. Upgrading to a beefier tire also, uh, it definitely improves the look. Makes it look a little more uh, rugged and truck-like, if you're into that. And these are 285, 70, 17 Duratrax on here, which is close to a 33-inch tire. And I just did a video talking specifically about these tires, so feel free to check that one out. The one downside to off-road tires is that uh, they're probably going to hurt your fuel economy. But, I mean, let's be honest, you weren't shopping for a Prius before you got one of these things anyways, right? So... Aside from that, if you got the money to shell out for a nice set of tires, they don't have to be this big. Even even just an off-road tire in the stock size is still going to make a big difference. So if I was only going to modify one thing on this 4Runner, it would be upgrading the tires. And now, bonus time for the two modifications that I regret, or at least I would have done differently. The first one is right here, this uh, light bar mount in the front bumper. I already talked about this on my light bar video. But I built the mounts for these, for this one myself, and it's just not really rigid enough for how I would like it. The, the light kind of wiggles if you're on a bumpy road when it's turned on. So if I was to do it again, I would probably just buy pre-made brackets or at least come up with a better design myself to make it more sturdy. Not the end of the world, it's not a big deal, but it's just, I would do that differently the next time around. And the second thing that I regret modifying on this is when I lifted it, of course the cam bolts and the lower control arms were seized. I mean, once again, people like it when I say this, but thanks a lot, Canada. So they, I couldn't get it aligned with those bolts the way that they were in there. They were not budging. So I had to buy new control arms and new bolts. And uh, I cheaped out, I'll be honest. I cheaped out and bought the, I think they were from SPC. And they suck, I'm sorry. Like, sorry SPC, but your bolts suck. It's a crappy design. They've got like a kind of a plastic sleeve that goes over the bolt and then we were looking at them before we installed them and we're thinking like this plastic is going to crush and it's going to develop play. So uh, guess what happened? I'm pretty sure they're crushed in there and I've got a little bit of play in the steering that I can kind of feel a little bit of slop. It, I guess it could also be coming from my, my upper ball joints that are getting kind of worn out. I'm still running the, the factory uh, upper control arms in there so they might be getting kind of tired too. So if I was going to do that again, I definitely would just go ahead and order them from the Toyota dealer and get the actual Toyota cam bolts. I should have done that in the first place, but it was kind of complicated. They don't really have one part number for the whole setup. You have to literally order like every nut, bolt, and washer individually. And I went online and I saw you could just go on whatever website and buy the whole kit from SPC. So I thought, hey, that's a great way to go. It turns out... Uh, they're not great. So anyways, there you go guys. Those are the uh, the four main modifications I would make to a 4th gen 4Runner. And I guess the two that I probably would avoid. And uh, I'm pretty, I guess, now that I think about it, most of these would, would work for a Lexus GX470 too. So if you got one of those, hey, we're pretty much brothers, right? Anyways, I gotta get out of here. I hear sirens out there. And after that sign that I saw telling me not to be in here, <laughs> It's time to start this heifer up and get lost. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you on the next one.